Good morning. Sometimes when we're trying to face something new or when we're facing a difficult decision or when we want to celebrate something or when we just feel lost and alone and uncertain about life, the universe and everything, we need a blessing. We don't always think of it that way or word it like that. We say we need advice or support or companions or someone to come along beside and lift us up again so we can see more than the tops of our shoes. We seek a blessing. For many of us, we go home. We ask mom. We talk to dad or brothers and sisters, close friends, those we grew up with, those who knew us best. We want them alongside. We want to be in their presence. Somehow we know that them being there, being home, will make all things better. Maybe it won't be fixed or solved or wished away, but at least we won't be alone. We seek a blessing. Mary, faced with an incomprehensible burden and gift, ran to cousin Elizabeth's house, looking for someone who knew a little of what she was going through looking for a place to hide until the reality of her condition could be become something real. And she received a blessing. The prophet Micah spoke of a blessing coming to an unexpected place, an unassuming town. Yet by God's grace would become the means through which God would bless the whole world. Bethlehem, the little town of blessing. We seek a blessing. We light these candles, the candle of hope, of peace, of joy, and of today, love, as a sign that we know blessing and we know waiting for blessing to be felt and lived. We light these candles as a sign that we will still seek a blessing. It's time to go home. Please stand in body or in spirit for the call to worship and remain standing for the following hymn. Come, joy, lighten our spirits. Come, hope, lift us from despair. Come, peace, ease our frantic worry. Come, love, shine in all we do. Come, Jesus, be born in us. Come, Lord, set us free. Come, God, rule in our hearts and teach us to sing with joy.
seated. Boys and girls, I invite you to come and join me up here by the altar this morning. Will you come? Come on over. Come on, Gatsby. Up here, please. Have a seat over here. Good morning, boys and girls. How are you this morning? Are you doing good? I'm glad to hear it. I'm glad to hear it. I have some exciting news to share with you this morning. And this exciting news I have to share was given to Mary. How many of you know who Mary is? Yeah, who's Mary? Can you tell us, Gatsby? Mary, Mary is God's mother. That's right. Jesus is God, and Mary is God's Jesus mom. And I wonder if any of you have a nativity scene that you've set up in your home. Yeah, have you? Okay, so let's see. Do I have my mic on too? I'm going to confuse the guys up there. Okay, so um, do you put her up in the, in the t- nativity set there? She's not normally up there right now because Jesus hasn't been born yet, right? As we, as we march to the time of Christmas, when do you think Mary will actually come and stay up here? When? When Jesus is born. On That's Christ. right. Gabby, were you going to say that too? Okay, good. When Jesus is born on Christmas. So um, Friday night, Mary will probably be up here with with um, Joseph and baby Jesus, right? We'll see her then. So do you know what the the good news is? Well, um, God sent an angel to Mary to tell her that he was going to send a son and she was gonna be the mom. That's pretty exciting news, isn't it? It's really exciting news. I wonder how Mary felt though when the angel talked to her. Do you have any idea how she might have felt? Yeah, go ahead, River. Do you think she was scared or surprised? Yeah? Gabby, you have an idea? How do you think her face looked when when the um, angel was talking to her? Oh, we've got hands over our mouths, our eyes are big and bright. Yeah, Gabby? Maybe kind of nervous? A little nervous. I think that's a fair thing to say. Yes, she was probably very nervous. Yeah. So um, what do you think would happen if an angel came and talked to you? Yeah, River? Surprised. You'd be surprised? It would be very surprising, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, when the angel talked to Mary and told her what God was telling her, she believed that. She believed that in her heart, and she thought about these things. That's pretty surprising, isn't it? Yeah, Gabby. If an angel would come to talk to me, I would probably be in disbelief. You would probably be disbelieving. I think that's a very normal response, don't you, church? Very disbelieving. So she didn't understand why God picked her to be the mother of Jesus, but she trusted God to do, um, that God was doing in her, and and that if God could trust her to do that, then she was gonna trust God to to be Jesus' mom. So what cookie cutter shape? Let me see what we got here today. Here we go. Of these cookie cutter shapes, which one do you think you're going to get today? You want to look them over? A star. Well, maybe. Keep looking. Hmm. A gingerbread. Oh, maybe. Gingerbread. Gingerbread. Okay. Who have we been talking about today, though? What have we been talking about? Do you think that might be the one? Mm -hmm. 
Oh, yes, you're right. We're going to do angel cookie cutters today. And Miss Mary, she's made more cookie dough. Yes, Gatsby? The next Sunday, we're going to do the gingerbread. Maybe so. We're running out of options now, aren't we? Okay, so today, um, when you leave, I'd like you to take... Um, this cookie cutter page so you can color the angel and you can cut her out maybe even and maybe even put her on your tree or on the refrigerator and while you're baking the cookies with an adult and you're waiting for them to get made you can be thinking about these questions exactly Gatsby not your first rodeo huh so you're going to be thinking about these questions and maybe talking about them with your family. Okay, do you want to reach in there and each of you take an angel cookie cutter? And we've been getting some very lovely pictures of decorated cookies that the children have been making throughout this Advent season. And Miss Mary, would you raise your hand or stand up over there? Would you turn and look and see? Yes? <laughs> Miss Mary has been faithfully making our cookie dough, and you look for her after the service, and she will give you your cookie dough to take home, okay? All right, then I'd like for you to, if you would, bow your heads and fold your hands, and let's pray together, shall we? Let's pray. Amazing God, thank you for sending your angel to remind Mary that nothing is impossible for you. Remind us of your love every time we see an angel. Wouldn't that be fun? Every week, every day, when we see an angel this week, Lord, we ask that you would just help us to remember your love. And like the angel, allow us all to share the amazing news of Christmas and Jesus' birth. In his name we pray, amen. Amen. All right, you can go back to your seats. Thanks for coming up. Hear this reading from Micah 5, 2 through 5a. As for you, Bethlehem of Ephrathah, though you are the least significant of Judah's forces, one who is to be a ruler in Israel on my behalf will come out from you. His origin is from remote times, from ancient days. Therefore, he will give up Give them up until the time when she who is in labor gives birth. The rest of his kin will return to the people of Israel. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. They will dwell secure because he will surely become great throughout the earth, he will become one of peace. When Assyria invades our land and treads down our fortresses, then we will raise up against him seven shepherds and eight human princes.
Please stand as you are able for the gospel lesson from Luke 1, 39 through 45. Mary got up and hurried to a city in the Judean highlands. She entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. With a loud voice, she blurted out, God has blessed you among all women, and he has blessed the child you carry. Why do I have this honor that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as I heard your greeting, the baby in my womb jumped for joy. Happy is she who believed that the Lord would fulfill the promises he made to her. I'm bursting with God news. I'm dancing the song of my Savior God. God took one good look at me, and look what happened. I'm the most fortunate woman on earth. What God has done for me will never be forgotten. The God whose very name is holy, set apart from all others. His mercy flows in waves after wave on those who are in awe before him. He bared his arm and showed his strength, scattered the bluffing braggarts, he knocked tyrants off their high horses, pulled victims out of the mud. The starving poor sat down to a banquet. The callous rich were left out in the cold. He embraced his chosen child Israel, and he remembered and piled on the mercies and piled them high. It's exactly what he promised, beginning with Abraham right up till now. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. What a great, tremendous joy it is to be together to hear these words from the Gospel of Luke. This fourth Sunday of Advent, when Christmas is well within eyeshot. What a joy to remember the characters of the Gospel of Luke who are unique in all the Gospels in their responsiveness to the Holy Spirit's call on them and the Holy Spirit's activity in their life. If I were to give this story an image I'm sure you all might have your own visual images of what is happening, but the image that is alive in me this morning is the image of the Christmas tree with an angel on top and blessing after blessing after blessing cascading down from that news and with a base at the bottom that is rooted in all of the biblical story in the Hebrew tradition, the Jewish tradition, and the Christian tradition that grows from that wonderful Jewish tradition. At this time of year, no matter which Bible stories we're reading, Christians and Jews both are invited to embrace light and embrace hope, each in their own ways. And this hope and this light and these blessings flow from the scriptures, both the Old Testament and the New Testament. The scriptures announcing, reminding God's people again and again that it is not the systems that seek to control us that have the final say. Love, God's love, always has the final say. And we gather at Christmas time to remember this in our bodies and with our eyes and through our taste buds as we eat the delicious foods of Christmas and with our ears as we hear the carols. 
we gather together because we are desperately in need of this good news. And we need reminders of it again and again, especially at this dark point in the year. Mary and Elizabeth are just gems of characters. And we can thank Luke for offering them to us because how unique they are in their response to the angel messenger. Elizabeth's husband, Zechariah, to whose uh, Mary goes to his home to receive Elizabeth's blessing, to receive the blessings of Elizabeth's home. Zechariah, too, receives the blessing of this season, but as you probably know, he doesn't at first get the memo the way Mary does instinctively. Zechariah has to be rendered mute. He cannot speak for the duration of Elizabeth's pregnancy with John. Elizabeth, unlike Sarah in Genesis, is receptive and she gets to hear the news. And Mary, unlike Sarah, Mary gets to hear the news firsthand, directly from the angel, not by eavesdropping on Abraham, her husband's conversation with three angels. Mary gets the news firsthand. Elizabeth receives the news with acceptance. And these two women come together in Elizabeth's home. Mentor and mentee, two pregnant women, one who has been told that no possibilities can come from her body, and another who surely, as Gabby said, was full of disbelief at first, and yet who, because she was blessed, was able to make room and make space for a new possibility to come into being. Elizabeth and Mary gathered in Elizabeth's home, in Elizabeth's home, one bearing witness to the other. And from that blessing that Elizabeth offers Mary flows this beautiful song of praise Danny read for us. I'd like to focus a bit on Mary's song of praise as we think about that image of God's blessings cascading down. I did not know that among the many times that blessing is used in the story we heard today, that there are two different ways that the word blessing is used. And in fact, in Greek, two different words used that are translated, both of them, as blessing. And I think that is a very interesting thing for us to consider together because on the one hand, we have blessing as in the word eulogy. And it's very interesting too how mourning and joy, mourning with O-U-R-N-I-N-G, mourning and joy kind of converge in this story. Because on the one hand, you have Elizabeth saying, blessed are you among women. When she is saying that, she's telling Mary, people are saying good things about you. The Greek word for that type of blessing is eulogia, or good word. When we gather to remember and give thanks for someone's life, we often offer a eulogy a good word about the person. And we all hope that we'll live our lives in such a way that people will want to say good words about us. In other words, that we will have been a blessing to others. So that's the one use of the word blessing. But then there's Mary using it a different way. When she says, all generations will call me blessed. When she says 
um, blessed, uh, blessed be the God of Israel. So in, this other, in these other instances of blessing and blessed, Mary is using a word that Luke uses lots of time in the gospel, lots of times in the gospel, and the word is makaria. And I remember my New Testament professor in seminary talking about this, and this is a silly aside, but I think it's very interesting. Makaria is related to a word, the word for macaroni. Makaria and macaroni. Macaroni gets its name from a kind of barley that was served at funerals. So it is related to a funeral meal. And this word associated with mourning, O-U-R-N-I-N-G, is what Jesus uses both in the Gospel of Matthew and in the Gospel of youth, of Luke <laughs> and youth, to say, blessed. So in the, Beat or in the Beatitudes, in the Sermon on the Mount, and in Luke's version of the Sermon on the Mount called the Sermon on the Plain, Jesus says, blessed are you if you mourn. Blessed are you if you're persecuted. When Jesus uses that form of blessing, he's using the same words his mother used to say, generations will call me blessed, blessed be the God of Israel. He's using that same word, makaria, which has to do with mourning and also has to do with joy and happiness. And it's this crazy and amazing way that God works in the Gospels to turn upside down the things that we think we know for sure. Another way of understanding this form of blessing is to see it as God extending God's self. That is another meaning of this word that we also translate as happy, as in happy are those who mourn, happy are those who are poor. Doesn't make much sense until we think more about it. So in Mary, in Mary's song of praise, we not only witness Mary saying, oh, people are saying good things about me, we also See Mary saying, I am willing to be extended. I'm willing to be made large. I'm up for this task, God. What a remarkable, remarkable thing for her to have the presence to say. So God works through blessing not only the blessings that come from living our lives with love so that we may speak well of others and others may speak well of us so that love may flow through that, but God also works through the blessing of meeting people in their situations and making large, enlarging their capacity to sit with wonder, with things that are unknown and not fully understood, with mystery. Mary's ability to make herself large, and it's interesting that this wording is all over the place in Mary's song that we call the Magnificat. That is a word that means enlarging, making broader in praise. So God, in this blessing that Mary receives in Elizabeth's home, is inviting her, inviting us to make space. As Joy to the World, sung by the choir, says, let every heart prepare room. It is easy at this time of year, at least for me, to want to succumb to discouragement. I recognize more and more as I age that I hate the early darkness. I just don't like it at all. It's very hard for me. 
the shorter days in the northern hemisphere. Both Advent and Lent come at kind of dry and desert times in the year when we've said goodbye to one form of blessing, whether that's harvest or um, when we're looking in Lent to embrace the spring. They come in these dry times of the year, and I'm thinking of all the great Christmas movies that have come out around this time of year that focus on a dominating system, whether that's like Star Wars or The Lord of the Rings, these movies that have these epic stories of love triumphing over evil. I think it's no accident that in the secular world, stories like this emerge at Christmas time as well, because there's something, I believe, in the human psyche that needs to know that God that love, however you choose to translate it, that love will find a way to enlarge, to make space, to prepare room, to create hope and space for hope. So may we today take with us the blessings of Mary the blessings of home, the blessings of Elizabeth seeing Mary as we go from here. Before Danny sings, I want to read a quote from a Presbyterian minister from much earlier in the past century, Thomas John Carlyle, that again speaks to this idea of God's blessing cascading out and down, ever broadening, to bless God's people, and to bless God's people with imagination, to make room for God with us. God's dream and destination is a day when all flesh in all places is sensitive, receptive, welcoming to torrents, freshets, cataracts, floods, and deluges, and inundations of the Spirit. Just as Mary is receptive to the Holy Spirit at work in her life, may we live in her example, in Elizabeth's example, as we consider the spaces in our lives that may have become small, that we want to enlarge, as we consider parts of our lives that do not feel alive with imagination. May we find time and space to open those places to God's blessing, to the blessings of home and the blessings of coming together, whatever we consider to be home, and the blessings that flow from God's love made known in human form, beginning with the one who said, yes, I will be the home for what will become in the world the reign of God among us.
never going back How amazing to know that we've only just begun Yeah, we've only just begun I'll keep pressing on, I'll keep going strong I'll keep singing the same song we've all There's no doubt about it, I'm on my way home I'm not yet where I'm going, but I'm a long way from where I was I hear a choir of angels cheering me on Ooh. I'm But I'm a long way from where I was. As we begin our time of prayer, I am taking the risk of inviting you to do something slightly interactive. You don't have to play along if you don't want to. But as we think about the choir of angels cheering us on, I think of the blessing that children in our Wednesday evening program offer each other at the end of the evening. And it's very simple, and we've done it before in this space. We break into pairs and we say, to each other, may God bless you and make you a blessing. Just as Elizabeth blessed Mary, and surely Mary's presence in her home blessed Elizabeth, let's take a moment to either silently think about that or to offer that to the person beside you, simply by saying, may God bless you and make you a blessing. May God bless you and make you a blessing. Let us pray. You have made us to love you, to make space for you, O oh God. And though there are things in our lives and in the world, both close to home and flung far away, Though there are things that disturb and perturb and things that do not bless, we remember again as Christ's body gathered here today that in you there is fullness of joy, that from you all blessings flow. And so we think of the places of pain in the world, in our community, in our homes, in ourselves, the place is in need of healing. And we thank you that you are present in these spaces. We thank you so much, oh God, for the many blessings that do flow and the blessings we have the good fortune the joy to participate in. And so we give you thanks for the ways blessing has flown in our lives this past week. O 
Oh God, we offer you with Mary and Elizabeth our hope that these blessings will continue to flow in the week to come. Make us receptive to you. Make us, with, with our consent, as Mary gave her consent, make us receptive to your Holy Spirit's nudges this week as we continue preparing for Christmas, as we prepare our hearts to visit again the incredible mystery and miracle of you in human form, of you growing in us and present around us and beyond us. Thank you for this miracle that we wait again to receive and that we are always receiving. God, we especially pray today that those who feel far from blessing would find in their daily lives reminders of your love. We know this love comes to us in many, many forms. If it is your will, may we be representatives of that love in surprising and unexpected ways this week. Prepare us, be born in us, may we make room all these things we pray with thanksgiving in the name of the one who taught us to pray as we now sing together. blessed in order that we might be a blessing. And so this morning we consider the ways that we have been blessed with resources. And I invite you to consider those resources that you have offered through electronic giving or that you leave in the plate uh, as you um, exit this morning to think about the ways that God has blessed you and through your offerings, bless one another. You'll notice our Advent tree here is 
um, collecting quite a few bulbs on it. We are still receiving um, our Advent offering. There's a, a envelope here in your pew. And, and again, if you do electronically, you can denote that it's for the Advent offering. This allows us to finish strong uh, and in different ways. We had a wonderful collection last year or last week for Stan Kenton. I think we raised about $1,800 to go towards the uh, money that we paid the musicians, so thank you for that. And also Christmas Eve, all of our offerings received that night are going to go to uh, humankind and open door. So the way that you give through Advent offering allows the church to continue meeting the needs of our ministries, to finish strong this year, and to start the new year off on a strong start. So I just invite you to hold all of those um, offerings that you give in the multitude of ways that you do. And we um, offer them to God and we ask for God's great blessing to be upon them, that we might be vessels for God's use. And now I invite you, if you would, to stand as we sing our closing song, Come the Long Expected Jesus. sound of the organ this morning, aren't you? This morning, as we do every morning, the light of Christ precedes us exiting this sanctuary as a reminder that we do not go into the world alone. So this morning before you leave, I invite you to just take a deep inhalation. Will you do that with me? And as those, our lungs expanded with that bounty of air that we just drew into them, I invite you to think this week, as we draw ever nearer to the manger time, to think about our hearts expanding, as Rev Bev shared with us this morning, how we can also expand and open ourselves up to new possibilities new ways of thinking, new ways of being in our world. One more breath in. And so we go with the light of Christ going before us, knowing that love has, love is, and love will always come upon us. Amen? Amen.